everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca of Artist Rebecca LS. This is the channel where we have fun with art. And today I'm going to be doing a sketchbook tour and explanation of my 100 day challenge. It was the very first one that I've done. It, it runs every year starting at around February the 18th and finishing at around May 26th every year. And I decided you could use anything you liked. You could choose any theme you liked, any sketchbook, any media that you wanted to do, absolutely anything. There was no criteria other than create something every day for 100 days. So if you needed to improve on something, you could choose that. I decided I was going to do uh, nature landscapes with or without animals because it was something I knew I wouldn't get bored with doing. The 100 days is a heck of a long time. I also gave myself goals to try and every day include as much mixed media as possible, including a sepia art graph block because I wanted to get used to using that. Plus, I wanted to get used to the Cardi Fat Book, which is quite a big book. So I was creating quite large pieces every day. So follow along with me in this video to discover how I got on and would I do it again? Would I use the supplies again? And would I use this Cardi Fat Book again? So let's get into it. So first of all, this is an eight by eight centimeter sketchbook. It is open stitched. So that means there's no spine cover. It's just a stack of handmade Cardi paper from India that has been stitch bound. It did have this brownie gray cover that's paper on the back, but during use it's ripped off. So it's not hard bound at all. So you can't travel with this. Uh, it's not rounded corners. I have actually cut the corners, as you will see. So as we open it, let's make sure we're in view. Yeah, we can see that. That's good. So in here, I this is not the 100 day challenge to start with. When I get to that, I will show you. I started this before the 100 day challenge. So I was just experimenting here with pencil and things. And you can see that some of the texture is left behind. You can't scrub it out. Then I toned the next piece of paper with red. I think it was the ink tents red pencil. Then it was like Christmassy time. So I was doing the Christmassy and this was in gouache. So I thought that came out quite nice. And then the next page is just like, uh, uh, you know, pen line drawing thing. Then you get this book, this kind of paper here. And then I did another pen like outline drawing. Then we start the 100 day project. And day one was these penguins. And I thought this came out really well. It was watercolor. So here I wrote down my choices. I was to use a sepia art graph, nature, ocean, landscapes with or without animals. That's the theme. And I could use watercolor pencils, including ink tents and neo colors for texture. So that was to be used on top of the watercolor. Now I can tell you for 55 days, I did achieve that. And We'll get into that more as I go on. So you can see here, this was the sepia. And the background is, you've got the watercolour. And then I did go in with the neo colours for the texture. Now this one may have not included ink tents. Though I may have gone over the top. So then we've got day two and three. This was an oxen with a person, a farmer farming them and I did a lot of the sepia art graph for the sky and the soil 
and then I've got ink tents for the flowers and the neo color texture for the grass. And then day three over here, the fox was a lot of pencil and neo color, and I toned the paper with the sepia art graph. And then day four and five, I have again toned with sepia art graph, done the tree in that and watercolour and then the Neo or ink tense pencil actually scribbled over the top of that. This again I toned it with sepia and you can just about see that through the grass and then I've got the scribbling effect from the Neo pastels or the, the pencils. Again here toning the paper with the art graph and I did the building blocks. So this was a fox in an urban countryside setting. And we've got the flowers at the front here. This page was just dead. It was before I got, I was testing things before I got my first Daniel Smith watercolors, but I ended up not using this in the end. So then we go to the next day, I think it's day five and six of the 100 day project and I did cows and that was new for me. I haven't done cows. I was trying to do things that are new and animals I haven't done before <laughs> or want to do more of. So again, I had toned it with sepia and I did the fence in sepia, the art graph. And then I did a mixture of these pencils of the Prismacolor, that uh, fluorescent pink. And then we've got the flowers you know, there. This one was interesting. I did like this, of a person walking through a huge cornfield that was taller than them. So I did a lot of texture. The sepia is the floor here. And then we've got lots of texture with the Neo Color and the green ink tense pencils. And then we've got the geese and the chickens. Again, I toned both these pages with sepia first before I then drew on top. And the geese are gouache. I added the white gouache. And again, I added white gouache for the flowers here because I felt it just needed a bit of lifting. I find with this paper, watercolors and your, your work in general comes out a bit duller. It's not so vibrant and crisp. But I did like the um, the size. It gives you a nice work area. You know, everything comes up. The square is just kind of a nice area to work on. Then I did a puffin. I thought he came out nice. Um, you've got the texture on the water. The sepia I did for the tree trunk. And the ink tents is scribbled on top of the tree watercolor. And then I've got some neo pastels for the water texture and the rock texture. Here again, I did the sepia for the whole background thing. And then I did the Prismacolor pencils for the wood panel area. And then ink tents and watercolor and things for the frog and for the boats. All of that. Then sepia everywhere for both these pages you can see it's more earthy for the greenhouse and you've got the rabbit here and the vegetables in the garden and i did use as well sometimes this green acrylic marker pen from liquitex to highlight areas and you can just about see that on the grass area here and then we've got this lovely inspired kind of Japanesey garden. You've got a lovely bridge and the kind of greenish water here, the rocks and the trees with the lovely pink blossom. Again, it was all toned with sepia, both these pages, before adding on watercolour. And you've got the bits of the green from the acrylic pen there. This one was a lot more pencil work on top of watercolour. I don't think I used ink tents. 
this again toned with sepia the whole bridge here is sepia and um, the house the rooftop was sepia and the background houses and then just going in with the neo colors i don't think i used the green acrylic marker on here but may have done on here i'm trying to see if i can find it i think around here to outline i can see bits and i like that i got the shadow figures i went over the top of them using a holbein colored pencil in grape and then these sheep in the fields at a distance i used white gouache and then again the whole area is sepia and here um the background i did in sepia first and then the house is sepia and the neo color for the texture on the fields and for the trees and then here i use the green acrylic marker to just highlight the grasses in the plant pot and outside the shed there and my picnic table came out rather wonky and fun but that was the fun of doing experiments and then we've got more sheep close up but i did i think things went wrong i did it all white and i'd forgotten that sheep have black heads <laughs> so i then went over the top with i have a feeling it's either neo color or a black ink tense pencil and i should have added water and i didn't but i it might be a, a prismacolor black pencil i can't remember so that you know you live and you learn from these experiments the whole point of a 100-day project is to do things you haven't done before, to experiment and to play. So with this one, this lake looks like it's on fire. But what I was trying to do is to get the reflections of the houses. And this roof is kind of orangey red. And then the houses are yellow. So getting the reflection of the flowers into the, the kind of lake pond thing. And I used the white gouache on the goose there. And again, it was all toned with the sepia first. So you can see it gives a kind of dollar image. And I was playing around with colour, really, and having not green hedges but, or shrubs, but purpley and blue, just for the sake of it. And then this one is a lot of trees all around. I was getting reference images from places like Unsplash, and I came across this scene and it looked lovely. Well, literally, you've just got sticks of trees and a load of greenery where you can't really make out what a, the tree shape. It's just all together. And then I've got the rocks in the river and some texture of neo pastels, neo colour. And again, I had done the background in sepia first, but the trees are sepia too. This tree is sepia, that ground is sepia, and the building here is sepia. And then I went over in Prismacolor pencils. And here again, everything is sepia. And the fence here at the top is a neat sepia, and the bench here, well, it could be a gate, maybe it is a gate. <laughs> and uh, then I didn't add anything else there. Here, I did a bit more detail and this field is the green acrylic marker by Liquitex. And then I did a water mill. Again, sepia. Uh, this whole thing is sepia, the trees, the trunks. And then I just swizzled my Neo Colour crayons over to add texture. This was a weird looking tiger in the water. I thought this was more folk arty this particular one and i pre-sketched using a pink biro so i thought that was fun and then this again everything was pre-done with sepia and then i went over the top using the watercolor and the neo colors to create the texture i've got the tiny boats in this one and i like that i got the texture with my twisby fountain pen for the rock area here. Then this is a fun one. I've got a big house and the, there was like a pole, a bit like a telegraph pole. And then you've got the shrubs here 
and the sepia fields at the back there. And this one was a sunset kind of theme. And I did the boats in pink biro, just a basic pink biro, but, and added in some water texture there. And here I did everything in sepia again and added a sepia path. But I pre-sketched using an orange Crayola super tip pen. And I found that that was great fun. It got in everything a lot better to loosen up the detail. And then I've got the sepia for the pathway here. Because we get to a point where I stop using sepia. Because I'm so sick to death of it. I like my squiggle sheep. The texture with the um, fountain pen that I was using as well. It just, it adds nice texture to your artwork. And then this, I used the same technique again, and I had done watercolour, and then added some neo colour. but I had first started using a blue felt tip pen, or fibre tip pen, either the Crayola Super Tip or just another kid's jumbo one. You can see the blue outline here. And again here, this is when... I was using it quite often every day to do the first quick sketch. And the sepia is mainly, again, I toned both pages, but the ground is that. And I like the sleeping fox. That was inspired by a photo that Chris Packham, the uh, nature, uh, wildlife and television presenter from the BBC, um, he shared that on his Twitter slash X feed. So that inspired that. And then this again is a purple fibre tip pen that I did the pre-sketching with. And I've got the sepia here and in the tree. And then went in. These look a bit like um, it's just watercolour. I didn't use any neo colour there or ink tents, but the neo colour is on the tree texture and the roof. So I did quite well, but some days ink tents wasn't used. But definitely the sepia for 55 days absolutely was. You can see here, sepia sky, sepia ground, the whole page was sepia. And it gives a totally different look. This is the water, the river and the rocks and some hills and things. But it gives a totally different look when you turn the whole page. And then this was odd. It was inspired by a reference image, but it was like a weird twisty bridge that I was trying to capture with, I think it is a lighthouse. And then you've got the water. And again, purple fiber tip pen was used to start. And this one, fiber tip pen in purple. And it adds giving the outline, I think it's nice. And then I've just done the sepia again for the backgrounds, you can see it's coming through, but not as much. And I also did use Neo Colour for the texture of the grass and the water. And then I used the fountain pen for the texture and here as well. This was a lot of Neo Colour, as well as obviously the sepia for the wood frame that the parrot is on. And here, more sepia. The whole thing was sepia. And here, I just completely covered the whole pages with the sepia and added a lot of water. Now, the Cardi Fat Book actually does take a lot of water. And as I've said before, I like the size of the pages. But I think if I was doing another project that is, say, 100 days or 50 days, I don't think such a big size is appropriate. I think A6 would have been better. And then I could have created larger pieces, taking more time after the project finishes. So you learn a lot of different things from taking part in these projects. And I also like that it wasn't dictated to me what I should be doing and what I should be learning. You learn for, by yourself, basically 
from what you've chosen to use and the themes that you choose. Again, I did pencil for these little badges here. And you'll see the sepia trees or the ground. It's always cropping up. And you'll notice after the 55 days, no. And that Liquitex acrylic pen is used here, a bit more there. Got the sepia on the gate posts. <laughs> and I remembered the sheep have black heads though. And the sepia pathway here. I like that I've added a lot of movement into the work. I can see a lot of movement. I wasn't even trying, it's just, it's like there. And I really like all of that energy and movement. And the scribble texture on the trees. I'm liking adding the Neo color at the end and the fountain pen for the texture. Sometimes, the ink tents, but I find it a bit more of a drag using them because I've got to get up and get my pencil pot. Whereas my Neo colors are like right next to me in an airtight container. So that's why I tend to go for them more. But I have noticed, say a week later, I might go back to a project, uh, to a page, and I will then add in pencil work. Now, this was an interesting page. I covered it in a DIY watercolour ground. I've done a lot of research, I'm still researching, about turning any paper into a watercolour paper. Because basically, watercolour paper, you want it to be non-absorbent to a point. You want the, the water to seep in, but not so quickly. And you want the colour to sit on the top and only sink in slightly so that you've got more time for moving it. So Daniel Smith came out with a watercolour ground. I don't like watercolour grounds. I've not used his, but they're always going to have a texture to them because basically it is bicarb and gesso. And even when you sand it, I don't like the, the texture. And this proves the point here. The page feels more solid but nothing wanted to go down on it properly. The just things just didn't work properly. And so it's more like a canvas, this page than a paper. But, you know, we're learning and I'm working on a new experiment at the moment using something that's vegetarian and very simple and not often thought of, but we've got to make sure, I've got to do my test before I say anything. So then here we've got the sepia pathway and you can see here I actually used orange fibre tip pen to do the initial sketch. So you've got the orange that you can see as the outline. Because using the fibre tip pen is water soluble you see, so a lot of it will just melt away. But I didn't actually want it to all melt away so that I could see it. Sepia again, <laughs> sepia again. This was more dramatic. You can see a tiny little badger here, it's creeping out. This was more simple, uh, but it was all sepia and going in for texture with the foliage. This I added my fountain pen texture to the castle and the rocks here. But again, it was all toned with sepia first. This is gesso, both pages, but the pages were toned with the sepia first. And you'll see that through here, a bit of the hedges are showing up the sepia. And this was one of my first lions I did, which I was really pleased with. All sepia toned again for the trees, the house, the ground, and the squirrel has shown up to collect his nuts. Then we've got the sepia here for the beach and the cliff sides. And I did little bits of fishes and used a cloth just to pick up the water so that you've just got the shadow. Now this was toned using the sepia and I also used the orange pen to outline the design first. This is gesso, not gesso, um, gouache for the leaves for the outer vine to frame the picture a bit more. And I really like how this came about. 
and I used the orange pen again. And again, I used the orange pen for this one. You can still see it's all blended in. And the sepia for the trees and everything. Use sepia again, but not so much. But I can see it's coming through in places for the buildings. And again, I was very inspired. This is from the TV show from the 80s called Howard's Way. It's a BBC Broadcast Corporation creation from the 80s in the United Kingdom, on BBC One, it used to be. I didn't watch it when it first aired. I've got the DVD collection now and we are enjoying watching it again. And so I really enjoy the show. And so I was inspired to capture scenes from it, which is all about sailing and the life and drama and the intrigue of kind of high society people who are into sailing and the yacht clubs and everything and their lives and things like that. And so I was very inspired by all the boats. So you've got, and I do lots of boat scenes, so it was perfect. And this came out really well. I like that there was too much water in the yellow and it blurred it all, which actually created a really effective night scene. It like the light is blurred when it's kind of a foggy, rainy night. So I really like that. Sepia again for cliff bits. And I did a real tiny distant boat there. And instead of green, I wanted to do a pink top for the grass of the cliff. This was toned in sepia again. And I did it for the tree trunks. Then I just scribbled with pencil to just show that there is some foliage there. And then both pages have got the sepia. Obviously, the boat is on the beach. And I initiate initially, this was done in the blue um, fibre tip pen. And then this was done in a brown fibre tip pen. And I was pleased again with how this line came out. I did blue uh, fibre tip pen again. And I think I can see bits of sepia here. I was probably starting to slow down with the sepia. But there is sepia in this one and under here and for the roof and things. And this was my first raccoon. <laughs> this was inspired by Omar Wynn. She shared some reference images. I don't know if it was when she was in Vietnam or somewhere else. But anyway, it seems it was a poolside area, but it kind of went wrong <laughs> for me. Then I added a dog to this one, which came out really funny. And um, I wasn't going to. It was literally just a scene without the dog. But I thought it needed something. So I initially did it all with a blue fibre tip pen. The same here. Blue fibre tip pen. And I'm not sure if I can see. There's sepia here. So I've probably done sepia as a very fine layer underneath. I'm not seeing sepia in here, but I am over here for the bit of the cliff area. Out on the boat, actually, sepia. So there is still sepia here. And again, the sailboat, like I've seen in the TV show, Howard's Way. And I used the blue fibre tip pen, and I did here. Lots of sepia again, and I used the blue fibre tip pen. It's like the little water area, rocks, cliffs. Over here is a kind of river and you're on top of the bridge. And then sepia again for the house and someone walking their dog. I think this may have been inspired by Katie Moody. I'm not too sure. Sepia for the bit of a boat here. And sepia for over here. This was reference image from somewhere like P Pixabay. And it's of Slovakia. Again, I used the blue fibre tip pen for both of these. And again, inspired by Howard's Way. And again, Howard's Way. I did a monochrome piece of just red. So there was no mixed media at all. And I like how that came out. Then we're back to using some sepia for the sand. 
And again, there's sepia for un the under layer of the boat and here on the sand. So I'm really liking how my boats were coming. The only disaster was this one on the right. I used the sepia a little for the path and the grass and over here. I didn't like how the boat, well, I did like the boat, but I didn't like this kind of triangle thing. We're supposed to be ladders, but I got the wrong angle. So then I've got the sepia for here. And then I did a lot of colored pencil and sepia for the chicken. I was pleased how she came up. And sepia for the pathway. And we've got people walking the dog. This was very interesting. This was a reference image, I think from Pinterest, how the windows were open and they were looking out of the window to this view and there were tables and chairs. And I did the initial sketch with the blue fibre tip pen. This is gouache. And can't you tell the difference? It's so vibrant. And again, inspired by Howard's Way. They're all out yachting on their sailboats. And you've got the lighthouse here. I've got the sepia for down here for the beach area and here for the rocks. No ink temps at all here. I did use it very limitedly. Oh, and that's the end. <laughs> we have finished the 100 day project. It's completely empty now, ready to be filled. And what I do like is that I was able to, that's why I chose the Cardi Fat Book. I had enough pages for the 100 day project in here with pages to spare. So if I really didn't like it, I could have carried on to the next page and not worry that I was running out of pages. So I like to contain a project in one sketchbook and not have to then midway have another sketchbook. So with all that said, guys, I hope you found this inspiring, useful, helpful. I don't know. I hope you did. And I'm going to catch you really soon on the next video. Take care, everybody. Creative wishes. Bye.